Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha said that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never hit his servants, nor did he hit his wives, nor anybody else. Yes, if she is disobedient, you can discipline her in accordance to the book of Allah Ta'ala. And he teaches us how to discipline our wife. Very basic. And if you take this guideline, Wallahi, you will discipline her. You will discipline her. وَاللَّاتِ تَخَافُونَ نُشُوزَهُنَّ فَعِذُوهُنَّ وَهْجُرُوهُنَّ فِي الْمَضَاجِعِ وَضَرِبُوهُنَّ فَإِنْ أَطَعْنَكُمْ فَلَا تَبْغُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ سَبِيلًا And to those women who you see on their part ill conduct, who are disobedient, first you admonish them. Doesn't work, you abandon their beds. It doesn't work, you hit them lightly. As for the first one, admonishment which is advice, with neither slander, abuse, nor disgrace or shame. If it does not work, after you've tried your best to advise her, now when we say advice here, when Allah says admonish her, you don't slander her. So a lot of people trying to, a lot of husbands say, I am advising her. He's almost killing her with his words. He's making the situation much, much worse. He's cursing her, slandering her, shaming her, and he's saying he's admonishing her. And he has not left anything in her, but he's disgraced. He needs to be admonished, not her. If that does not work, you go to the next stage, which is leaving, separating their beds. You do not sleep in the same bed as she does. If that, does, if that doesn't work, and usually that works indefinitely. If that doesn't work, you go to the last one, which is to hit them lightly. Now, how do you hit them lightly? You hear another misconception. A lot of people thought that you hit them with a sledgehammer. <laughs> And this is not light, this is a'udhu billah. You hit them lightly without touching their face, without any bruising, without tearing their skin, without breaking their bones. You are not allowed to damage her in any way. You know, lightly is like this. No bruise, no tear, no nothing. Not like this, <laughs> and knock her out the fun punch knockout. That's not lightly. That's haram. This is in accordance to the Quran. So you know now, alhamdulillah, how to treat your wife if she is disobedient. Now, the next thing that you must do is spend some time with her, communicate with her, dress up for her. Do you not like your wife to dress up for you? Do you not want your wife to beautify herself for you? Absolutely. Ibn Abbas says, I love to dress up for my wife. I love to beautify myself for my, my wife as I love her to beautify herself for me. What a beautiful saying. But today, you see men who has come, have come from work, all in shabby, dirty, filthy, stinky clothes. He sits down and she goes, he, goes, he says to his wife, Go dress up for me. Stuff for Allah. And she can't go over next to him because of the smell. <laughs> and yet she wants, he wants her to dress up for him. Look at himself. And he's subhanAllah. You want something from her, you be that example. You be that example. Whatever you want from your wife, whatever you want from her, you be her example. For example, you want your wife to be skinny, slim for example. You know, a lot of people like slim ladies. Many people do not like slim ladies, they differ. You want it to be slim. Well, mashallah, you're a bucket. <laughs> Is that going to work? She's going to look at you, it's got a backlash. Look at you. You know, when you want something from your wife, you got to look to at your wife, confront your wife as an example to that which you want from her. And that wallahi will work indefinitely. Likewise, you are not allowed to bring your outward problems inwardly. Meaning, you've had a hard day at work, you've fought with a couple of workmates, you've sworn at some people, you're angry. You go home, you're so angry, and there's no one but that little creature in the house, poor little thing, that cops it all the time. 
Shilaha, go away, come on, move. And the poor thing, what's going on? What's happening? All because you are angry because of work. And the poor thing gets thrown out, garbage, you know, she gets scared from you, she fears you after that, and all you can do is throw all your anger, it's like wallahi, a mountain being placed on her head, and she's done nothing. Be very careful. Do not let your problems outside come inside. Problems outside, remain outside. This is a new life, another life for you. Inside with your wife is an ultimate different life. Outside is a different life. Do not make the outside life your inside life. Two different lives. And lastly, regarding the duties of a husband to his wife, you must understand that she is a lady, she is your wife, she is the mother of your children, she is part of the family. For this you are her shepherd and she is your flock. You are obligated to protect her from hellfire through faith and righteous deeds. You are obligated to teach her Islam. As I mentioned, you cannot teach her. You, te you send someone that can teach her. For example, you get her a tutor. Or you allow her to attend lectures. Or you buy her Islamic material. Her need, wallahi, for Islamic knowledge is no less than her need for water and food. No less than her need for water and food. Likewise, no. That ladies are very, very insecure, very insecure. So when you leave to work every day, know that your wife may be, might be scared. She might feel unsafe. And this is a typical thing in ladies. They can become very, very scared. So allow her and only allow her to communicate, to contact righteous ladies. Let her have a link between, with ladies that will teach her to fear Allah Ta'ala, that remind her of the hereafter. Not ladies, and this is a warning, do not allow your wife to associate, to communicate with ladies who are backbiters, slanderers, carry fairy tales, un-Islamic, they're not practicing Islam at all. Beware from such ladies. Wallahi, they can destroy your wife and not help your wife. The only person that you allow your wife to communicate with is ladies who are righteous, who will try to help her Islamically and not destroy her. Do you want to continue the rights of the woman to the men briefly or you want to call it quits? Continue? Very briefly? Very briefly. Oh, it's a comeback, is it? Just very briefly due to time. The lady is due towards her husband. She must understand that she must obey her husband in all matters, except when it means disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, if your husband commands you to unveil, are you allowed to abide by his command? No. There is no obedience to creation if it means disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you must obey him in matters that do not uh, or are not disobedient to the Almighty Lord. Likewise, you must protect a wife, your private parts and his property in his absence. For Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when talking about the lady who is righteous, he mentioned that the lady is, the, the righteous lady is the one, if you look at her, you are pleased with her. If you command her, she obeys you. And if you are absent from her, <coughs> she protects her private parts and your property. Likewise, <coughs> you are not allowed a wife to allow anyone in your, in your house without your husband's approval. As the hadith mentions, it is not lawful for a lady to allow a man or anyone else in the house uh, if the husband has not approved of it. Likewise, you are not allowed, you are not allowed a wife to leave the house only with your husband's approval. And if you do leave the house, you must leave uh, dressed Islamically, unperfumed, with no makeup, 
Uh, you must lower your gaze. You must not chat to every person you see, even if you go shopping. You are allowed if it's a necessity, but you don't stay for half an hour talking to the man on a cashier, for example.